today is a, a fantastic project that we're very excited about. And it's a joint venture between the Goldenberg Group, Department of Environmental Protection, and the Montgomery County Conservation District. We've managed to get a bunch of volunteers together. We're hopefully going to improve the water quality and improve Plymouth Creek, which is uh, one of the most endangered creeks in, uh, in Montgomery County. So this site was chosen because it's such a highly visible site. We have 476, we have a lot of users of this shopping complex, so we thought it would be a great example of best management practices and an ideal way to do stormwater basins in the future for new construction. Dominic Rocco from the DEP came to us and said, you know, we'd really like to do something different with this basin. We want to encourage root growth to go outwards. This is a place where we can actually, we have a floodplain, even though it's inside a basin. Why don't we try to make it look more like a floodplain and function like a floodplain so when the water comes up, a lot of that water gets absorbed and gets treated before it flows down and it affects, you know, downstream and, and eventually the Schuylkill River. Originally, this stormwater was designed for capacity only, a big green bathtub, essentially. Nothing to do with water quality, simply to avoid overloading the streams. We're converting this to a more environmentally friendly stormwater basin. Kind of an example so that other developers can come and look, because this is very accessible, and see exactly what one of these basins looked like. We had a couple meetings where we got together and decided conceptually what we wanted to do with the basin. We had decided at that point we were going to convert about one acre to meadow and we were also going to plant the remaining, you know, five to six acres with trees and shrubs to stabilize some of the eroded ditches. You know, could I get one other person who can hand them to me? Well, unfortunately, we're not going to get much infiltration. There's a bottom of a basin, it's compacted, it's got shallow groundwater. We're dealing with a lot of uh, um, tree holes which are filling up with water. We get the water out and the water's coming back in because it's rained over the weekend. So it's not a type of BMP where you're going to get a lot of infiltration. But what you are going to get is nutrient uptake from the vegetation and you're also going to get a lot of water absorption during the growing season from these trees as they grow. And we also want more of a meadow grass which is much more lush, much more absorbent of storm water and can take a lot of that water and so that in itself is a volume control um, BMP. We're also putting in water quality BMPs into the basin itself. We're putting in one, two, maybe three, four bays and a bioswale behind me so that when the water comes in, it has an area where it can soak. <laughs> Coming the other way. <laughs> Probably the most difficult thing is when you make a change. And we're at, just getting to the point now where developers know what's expected. So um, working with developers has gotten much better and this developer in particular, Goldenberg Group, was one that we've worked with a lot in the past and uh, they've really stepped up to the plate when I asked them for help on this particular specific project. I think the challenge for the developers, the developers in general, is to try to work those environmental practices into a given project. And that's where the agencies can be a little bit more flexible and provide some knowledge in the process. And that's where, the, that's where a developer is going to have to be uh, a little bit flexible too. So hopefully today will be a little bit of an example of what the developer and the approving agencies can do in terms of working together because it should be a collaborative process. We're very lucky to have Goldenberg Group as a partner in this because they have the landscapers here who are going to be looking at after this after we're gone because most of the time when you have a volunteer effort they come out on that day they plant everything and then you know nature takes its course if, if a flood comes through then flood comes through and there's not really anyone around or any money around to go in and fix it up and in this case we do have Goldenberg here we're all going to be watching it to see how it does and this information that we get as this thing develops over time will feed back into the process and will help not only us but maybe other developers in the area get a better sense of the, the benefits, the challenges of, of, of actually putting you know, a lot of plant material in, in, in a basin that's not really normal uh, for the guys to maintain. So it really requires a higher level of maintenance and, and care you know, per square foot than you would normally do if you're just running a mower over top. But the marginal cost of maintaining 
this is really not going to be significant, which is great. I think that there's just been this mindset for so long that a stormwater basin should be dry and that it's just for rate control. And now the new philosophy is really to deal with the volume, to try and infiltrate it, recharge it back into the ground, and replenish our base flow. So, yeah, I think the mentality is changing, and I think people are going to see more and more of these naturalized basins and constructed wetlands. So these best management practices are certainly becoming more established within the county and within southeast Pennsylvania. We really saw an opportunity here to do something that's really good for the community and for the environment. And right from the start, we are all on the same page, and uh, it just got better and better over time.